Okay, today we are going to be looking at Exile of Memory by Joe Harjo. And according to, you know, our rules of analyzing poetry, the first thing we always do is we look at the title. So in case you don't know what the word exile means, it means to be um, cast out, like kicked out of a group or sent away. So exile of memory, that makes me think of somebody who feels alone or isolated. The next thing we do is look at the author. So Mary, uh, or not Mary, Joy Harjo was a, is a Native American. She is from the Mus Muskogee tribe. And she was the first Native American poet laureate. Now, a poet laureate is someone who the president at the time chooses to kind of be a chronicler of the country during the era, to observe what's going on and write about it and be paid for that. Uh, for a period of time, and she actually was a poet laureate for three different times, which is interesting. Okay, so then we look at the time period, 2019. Um, there's no specific thing that was going on that this piece is in connection to, but I mean, it was um, a, a rather mm, tumultuous time. It was There were lots of groups arguing and um, very divided time, so I'm going to go ahead and put that. Okay, and now we analyze it, marking words we don't know as we go. Do not return, we were warned, by one who knows things. You will only upset the dead. They will emerge from the spiral of little houses lined up in the furrows of marrow and walk the land. There will be no place in memory for what they see. The highways, the houses, the stores of interlopers perched on the bloody fields where the dead last stood. And then what? You with your words in the enemy's language. Do you know how to make a peaceful road through the human memory? And what of angry ghosts of history? Then what? Don't look back. In Sunday school, we were told Lot's wife looked back and turned to salt. But her family wasn't leaving paradise. We loved our trees and waters and the creatures and earths and skies in that beloved place. Those beings were our companions, even as they fed us, cared for us. If I turn to salt, it will be of petrified tears from the footsteps of my relatives as they walked west. Okay, so now we define the words we don't know. So petrified means to like be made solid and eternal. A lot of times they talk about petrified wood where it becomes hard like rock or petrified um, bones and things. Okay. Interlopers are outsiders. Marrow is the soft interior of bones and a furrow is a deep trench like a furrow in a field where you plant seeds then and cover it up okay all right so we define so now we analyze as we go through do not return we were warned by one who knows things you will only upset the dead so something here about um, returning to past or ancestral lands and it will disturb the dead. They will emerge from the spiral of little houses 
lined up in the furrows of marrow and walk the land. Okay, so I had to think a little bit about this one. Um, so where do the dead live or reside um, that seem to be like little houses? That immediately makes me think of gravestones, right? And they're lined up in furrows, in trenches, the bodies, right? And of the soft interior, and that's where the bones are. So I kind of think that they might be talking about they might emerge from their graves and start walking the land. So I'm going to put that over here. There will be no place in memory for what they see, the highways, the houses, the stores of interlopers or outsiders, perched over the blood fields where the dead last stood. So these ghosts from the past, if they saw highways and these kinds of houses and these strangers in this land, that would they don't have any memory for that. There's no understanding that they have for that. So they would be confused. So ghosts... Confused at modern life. And these things are perched over the blood fields where the dead last stood. Knowing that this is a Native American writer, I'm assuming that this is talking about when Native Americans were, you know, slaughtered and obliterated from their ancestral lands and so the ghosts are rising up and now there are these houses and highways and people living on the land that they once knew. You know we have lots of stories usually we use them as ghost stories of um, Native American burial grounds that nobody knows about. And then what? You with your words in the enemy's language. So this author, she's, she's acknowledging that she uses English, which is the enemies of her native people, language. Do you know how to make a peaceful road through human memory? And what of angry ghosts of history, then what? So there's lots of questions. Um, her, the authors, or the speakers, um, role in her actions. Okay. Don't look back. In Sunday school, we were told Lot's wife looked back and turned to salt. So this is a biblical story about a woman who looked back um, as they were fleeing a situation and she was turned into a pillar of salt because God told her not to, but she still did it. You should always listen to what he says. Um, and so she's remembering this story. But her family wasn't leaving paradise. In fact, they were leaving a bad place. And so she's saying, emphasizing here, how much worse it would be, how much harder it would be to not look back, leaving a place that was as amazing as their ancestral land was. And so that's what she's saying that her experience is because we loved our trees and waters and the creatures and the earths and skies in that beloved place. Those beings were our companions. And here she's saying that the trees, waters, creatures, earths, and skies are beings. So this idea of Native American spirits in nature, that they are creatures and living as well even as they fed us, cared for us. If I turn to salt, it will be of petrified tears from the footsteps of my relatives as they walked west. So she's saying it's not returning to the ancestral land 
that will turn her to stone or salt. But the tears of her ancestors, the treatment of her ancestors. Okay? Okay. So then, according to the way that we analyze poetry, then we try and figure out what kind of person would write this and or would be saying these things. And remember, it is never the author that is always wrong. We want to think about what characteristics of the person. So I can tell with all the references to like the dead and the past and those sorts of things that um, and the way that they talk about the ancestral place in the earth that this is a Native American, probably a Native American person. So speaker, Native American. Now, I can't pick out the gender in this. I don't see where it says, you know, my sisters or my brother or anything like that or anything that could be distinguishing. So I that's all I can do. But I think that the speaker is also someone who is returning to a place from the past. Okay. So the setting, where is this taking place? I think, I feel like it's taking place outside. The reasons I think this is because they're talking about the fields, they're talking about the earth, they are looking around at this place that they had left or that was from the past. So I feel like it's outside. And I feel like it was an important place. That's about all I know. So the situation being described is a person revisiting past place and feels conflicted about being there. You know, because they're asking lots of questions of themselves and others are asking questions and being warned, don't go back, and yet they are going back. So that's why I feel that way. So tone. So I think first, I need to determine positive, neutral, or negative. I feel like it's more negative. I feel it's a little sad. So I'm trying to find a word that is a little bit sad, a little bit um, angry, because she, there does seem to be some anger or frustration from the treatment of the past. So I think mournful. or regretful are good words for that. And then the theme, the message overall. So obviously this person's conflicted, um, but they still go back even though they said that they were warned not to do that. So I think they're saying something about the importance of going back or looking back and what that can mean for understanding yourself. So I'm going to say something about like sometimes you have to go back to go forward. That sometimes you have to look back at your past or the actions that you've done or others have done to you or how your culture has been impacted by the past in order to understand yourself better and be able to make better choices in the future and move forward. So that's overall what I think this poem is about.